Ladies and gentlemen, very warm welcome from Berlin, Germany. My name is Daniel Stecher and it's another Ladies Beyond Flying Aviation Women panel. In fact, it's the very last one of 2023. No worries, we are going to continue next year, but it's the very last one in this year. And it's a big honor for me to have a very special guest from originally Ukraine, Ludmila Slobodyanok, Chief Commercial Officer from Skyup Airlines. And when I asked her whether she would be willing to give a talk on Ladies Beyond Flying, we had a shit chat and she gave me a little bit background of her situation and of course uh, about her airline. And I think it would be a fantastic opportunity for all Ladies Beyond Flying to get to know her story. So uh, Mila, I'm going to help you so you can fully focus on your talk uh, ladies, please raise your hand. I will support Mila and call you in if you have a question. And uh, I wish us fantastic 45, 60 minutes, depending from the questions of the audience. Stage is yours. Yeah, thank you so much, Daniel. It's really pleasure and honor for me. And um, it's ki some kind of uh, serendipity, you know, because we appointed this meeting quite far away, so around five months away. And today is my very last day as a chief commercial officer in Skyup Airlines. So starting from tomorrow, other people will take care about operational side. And uh, I will be chief um, chief commercial advisor to chief executive officer. I'm still not get used to my new uh, position. And I think it's really a privilege uh, to gather today, investigate um, some crisis lessons, let me call it like this, and let me share my presentation. Uh, can you see it now? Yes, we can. Yeah, excellent. So um, what I propose, honestly, uh, to be more participants than to guests, between, because we are on the threshold of um, Christmas, you know, and I asked uh, artificial intellect to generate their image if I asked what it will be to combine fireplace and aircraft and that was what it's produced um, for many reasons honestly speaking because first of all I really want this time to be valuable for you and if you can postpone some mails and forms for 15 for 50 minutes it, it it will be really a chance to provide some insights and for you to touch your feelings, touch your emotions, because I'm pretty confident all of us had crisis in, in our life. And um, this picture uh, recalled me that, um, you know, we cannot be prepared once and forever. It's not possible. So it doesn't work anymore. Uh, 30 years ago, we didn't know about artificial intellect. By the way, IBS didn't exist uh, at that time. Uh, and, you know, today uh, IBS changed the game and um, new and new events happen in our life. And um, yeah, that's that's uh, let's try to be in such very friendly community and share our uh, general ideas. And the main motto uh, on which I want to concentrate today that, you know, crisis, tough events are beyond our control, but the response is in our hands. And that's what we will focus on. And we will um, check this in two aspects. So the first one uh, is a personal one and the other one is a professional one, because we understand that the change has happened, is happening, and uh, will continue happening. So we need to be prepared and to be flexible. And we look from personal perspective, we look who we are. And I kindly ask you to investigate internally who you are and to, you know, not only to admit, but to respect it with all peculiarities which you have. And then under when Daniel made uh, his post, you know, it was a comment. Honestly, I fall in love with this comment. The world needs more sky ups. I definitely think that the world needs more sky ups. And we will I, I will tell you a story. It will be not like, you know, ordinary presentation. I will tell you a story about sky up and we will together investigate the lessons which we highly appreciate and make some kind of mutual reflection, maybe. And, uh, you know, I really want today event when when it will be the end of today event let it be the start as usual in life when you each no means yes for for any other opportunity so let us be the start of celebration maybe of christmas um, time so um we see on the picture it's brave 
enough to be Ukrainian and to be Ukraine. But honestly speaking, I want to concentrate that it's brave enough to be human in, in, in the nowadays. And doesn't matter you are a man or woman, if you are vulnerable, it can be worse. It can be very frightening and very rewarding at the same time. So let's start from my very personal story. I was born not far from the North Pole. Uh, I'm pretty sure no one has ever heard the name of uh, the city, which is Vorkuta, because to the left are prisons, to the right are mines. And, you know, uh, to, I'm quite lucky. I didn't know at that time that it's not um, normal uh, to, to, to experience some shortage, because I, I assume that a lot of people in the Soviet Union experience the same shortage like sugar or soap in the family. You know, we we didn't know that it's not OK. And um, my father, he uh, didn't have any education at all, only first uh, forms at school. In the meantime, I understand that maybe it will be qu it was quite tough to overcome some initials. Uh, but what I want to underline that we should appreciate our past. Definitely, we should know, we should admit we cannot get rid or, you know, forget or replace. No, but we can acknowledge it. And just take like a reality and you will see that the same we should do in crisis, exactly the same exercise. So the, the reality, the reality is, uh, is like this. And what can I do with this? And appreciating your past, I kindly ask you to remember that it shouldn't shape your future. Uh, you can change the game each and every time. And that was what happened to me as well. Let me go ahead. So my idea was to replace fear and doubts by curiosity and courage. Uh, it means that you still experience fear, you know, you'd, sp you'd still have doubts, you're unconfident, but you replace it by the expression, what if, what if I try? And then you see that the situation may change. And if you remember any event in your life when you achieve success, I'm pretty sure that maybe you were embarrassed, you were not, pretty confident that um, you are um, you, you you would win here it's important to take first step even despite uncertainty because uncertainty is always here you make first step to clarify to research to understand the situation and to give you, yourself a chance no guarantees no guarantees at all but at least if you start moving and we even have you know in my native city where i was born uh, in order not to freeze because the average temperature in winter is minus 40 degrees by uh, celsius so mm. in order not to freeze you should move you should keep keep moving and you know it's good lesson for uh, for just t till the end for a whole life because when you start moving you start get some information you start investigate you start understand research never afraid to make first step if you don't understand the final goal the final outcome and the final result forget about this make first step get something and then you will reestimate the situation and you know folk cannot be enduring forever uh, that's very simple simple sample uh, when our um, crew uh, stuck in Sudan you know it was crisis situation in Sudan and uh, our cabin crew 36 people in that time were in Khartoum when the military coup started and it was attacked and uh, it was heavy, heavy weapon around. Nobody could not be prepared to this situation, could be prepared to this situation. And, you know, nobody knew what to do. And I just print screen from uh, fr from my uh, phone because what I started to do, I started Im immediately to mail to anyone, to the people whom I haven't ever known, just to find them in, in uh, LinkedIn, to, to 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 send mails to uh, all embassies who operated, which airlines operated to, to Sudan at that time, to United Nations, to Red Cross, you know, to everyone. What I need, I need to buy some some time. I didn't, we didn't know what to do, but we immediately start moving to buy some time to make decisions. Uh, honestly, when my daughter looked for her place in in the UK school because 
uh, we were relocated here. I uh, wrote, then I calculated, I wrote 149 mails, you know, that uh, because we needed, you know, in senior school, it's difficult to find uh, in year admission place and uh, to find some uh, scholarship findings. Sometimes I got the answer like, Little, you, uh, listen, your daughter has very great academical achievements, but we are school for boy. We cannot help. It's OK. It happens. So no worries and just make first step. Uh, if you remember the most vivid achievement or in, in your doesn't matter in your family or in your promotion or in your competition, when you burn your kids or when you stepped into your job, so you were not 100 percent confident, but still you achieved result. And that's what I kindly ask you to um, to keep in mind. Uh, I was 26 when I was appointed chief commercial officer of uh, Dambasara Airlines, which was in Donetsk. Honestly speaking, uh, since that time, I have some questions to the Lord because, you know, uh, the most popular route was Donetsk uh, Aleppo. No anymore airports in Donetsk, no anymore airports in Aleppo. So, but still, I was 26 and I didn't know anything about airlines. I previously I had uh, uh, worked in travel agency, like ticket agent, agent, like head of sales. So, commercial side was fully covered, but not else. And there were a lot of questions from my colleagues. Listen, 26 years, she's quite young, she's a woman, she has no uh, uh, aviation experience. Why she was there? Um, I felt embarrassment, honestly, but also I was very proud. And within one year, I spent my uh, my 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 uh, duty time. I spent it behind my office. I uh, talked to uh, engineering team. I talked to pilot. I spent time with handling. I spent time with safety, with security, with financial, with everyone. So uh, I wanted to understand how it works and what behind the process. Uh, within one year, no, no, there were no questions why I was appointed. So people were reassured that it was honor. That was quite important for me. But at the same time, uh, if you ask me, did I experience fear? Yes, I am. Did I experience doubts? For sure. Just I try to keep moving and make first step. And you shouldn't be afraid, you know, if you start doing something, definitely you are a beginner. If you start playing chess or, I don't know, cook soup, I will ask Daniel to cook soup. I don't know, maybe Daniel is a graceful master in cooking soup. But if I ask, <laughs> yeah, it's OK to make mistakes too. And don't afraid to ask. It's OK. So and people appreciate when you ask if you don't know. Within first period, you definitely have this time. But and does, honestly, it, does it mean that you have taken um, the, the position of being underestimated as a driver? So was it not rather a motivation for you to exactly show, no, you you have a lot of skills, you are talented, and now you want to learn all these things very quickly? Honestly speaking, I was so appreciate the opportunity uh, that I took it like a privilege, and I didn't want my uh, chief executive officer who chose me you know, I didn't want him to fail as well because of my choice. I I was so I, I think that positive motivation plays huge role. Trust your people, treat with your people like they can do impossible. And if you OK, if you make mistake, you make mistake. But at least they have chance and, you know, they see themselves in the best way. So they take your trust accelerate, absorb it and grow if you provide such chance. And it was important for me. Yeah. And honestly, I kept this for all my life and I has been exactly I have been doing, uh, doing exactly the same. It's COVID time. And when, you know, our teams in airports, handling teams, uh, they experience difficulties in the airports because of evacuation flights and etc. So it's no worries. Uh, you, you should join to a team in any position. Why it's important also? Because um, team start trust you. And this credibility you will exchange for very quick decision and support in crisis time. Because if in crisis time they start asking you a lot of questions or doubt in your decisions, it's too late, you know, to move quicker. And I will uh, show you how I exchange this credibility from, from shareholders, from C-level team, from front team. Exchange this credibility when you really need to, to, to navigate the crisis situation. 
what I want to underline here, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I attended in the UK a few quite um, significant events like Airlines 2023, uh, like uh, some meetings of uh, charter brokers, ACMI brokers, some conference for them. And you see now on the stage what I was surprised really. I had thought that in the UK it's not an issue regarding the ratio between male and female. But I was really surprised that it is an issue. Around 65% of participants are male. And I don't know no, any, any true reason behind this, honestly speaking. Um, and being woman, you should be ready that you should have very strong voice in aviation. I asked, honestly, I asked the Cranfield University, I asked the owners of companies, I asked the organized organizers of these events, what's the reason? No one could explain me the reason, but that's what we see. And I kindly ask you not to afraid, you know, to have your voice because, and again, in crisis situation, it's even more important. This is a photo which I took during this conference, you know, it was coffee break and I saw this table and I thought, oh, that's like I, I felt myself, not only because I'm a woman, I'm not local. Yeah, OK, I'm considered like refugee in this country. But please believe that even one voice in the room is mat matters and change starts from this one voice. And if you give you a chance and start talking, you will see that people around you, they have the same idea. They just, you know, afraid to were afraid to share. And if you're a woman, you can experience because, you know, in our society, unfortunately, uh, if you behave yourself in a little bit assertive way, it's, con in, it's considered for women that it's not like, you know, um, common behavior. You should be gentle. You should be kind. You should be very soft. Or, or, OK, I am with my child. But when we need to solve business tasks, let us be and let us behave in a business way. What you need for this, you definitely need support. Sometimes you don't have anyone around you, but, you know, your inner support, which just take your hand and say that, OK, I'm here. I'm adult. I'm here. We can manage with this. We will go through this. And I like this phrase very much that I never lose. I either win or learn. It's OK. It's normal outcome and I can deal and I can go ahead with this. It's a huge shortage. I see this in the team. I see, I see this in partners, in partnering teams. Honestly speaking, it's a huge shortage of positive relationship, of recognition, of, um, of compassion, of respect, of admiration. So please uh, do at least do it with yourself. Make it with yourself. Provide it to yourself and definitely for your staff as well. Uh, some weeks ago, we were with my daughter in Stansted Airport. I want to share a sh short story with you. So, and you know, uh, it was no signal between Stansted Airport and, and London. It happens quite often here. And only trains to Cambridge um, were available. Definitely, as only I uh, heard the announcement that the trains are canceled, what I started doing, I started moving. <laughs> That's exactly what you should do, start do when something happens. And we took our train to Cambridge and we walked around Cambridge. And uh, I asked her, what do you think about Cambridge? Do you like it uh, in comparison with Oxford? Because a couple of days before this, he had attended uh, alumni uh, meeting uh, with me in Oxford University. And he answered, yeah, Cambridge is uh, just brilliant. Uh, it's uh, amazing wipe here. And um, I asked, OK, what what do you think about um, about the university? And she said the university is great. But and then she make pause and said, listen, but it's not for me. Honestly speaking, I was quite embarrassed. I asked why it's not for me. So for, for whom, if not for you, you are 12 years old, you have brilliant academic results, you uh, got the scholarship and one of the best private school in the UK. But, you know, this statement in her in, in, in inside of her that it's not for her was really alive. And I, I thought of the day that maybe for this particular dialogue, this trip happened, honestly, because if you're human and if you're work, working hard and if you're talented and if you're ready to be uh, brave, so 
each university is for you. That's my photo from Harvard University. Honestly, I was so proud to be in Harvard that I called to my dad, who, as you remember, had a couple of years at the school. I said, listen, do you believe that I, I, I was walking around the Harvard University? Do you believe? And the answer was great. He said, I always knew it, that you would be there. And that's what I kindly ask you to remember. If you have somebody near you who can trust you, who believe in your victory, it's great. But if you don't, at least you can be yourself. You can provide yourself with all the opportunities and no limits inside of you. Uh, this is our team immediately before its new year, last new year in our um, in our office in Ukraine. And, you know, before you achieve your team success and company success, each and every person should be successful. And you as a leader should take care about internal motivation, about alignment, the company goals and goals of your people. And in, in the end of day, the personal success shapes the success of the company. And let me jump into the story of Skyup, which I'm pretty confident you will like. Uh, just small message, especially for women. Sometimes we get tired because of many reasons. Honestly, be a parent and yeah, maybe for men as well. So and please don't if you get tired, don't escape. Yeah, just try to take pause, try to 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 have some rest, to breathe and go again. Coming back to Sky Up, it was born in 2018, immediately before COVID time, and maybe that's that's defined our life uh, and our fate uh, for 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 next years. Um, and it was established as an uh, airline for tour operator. I will show you the structure. So this is the structure. You see, there are a lot of companies under one roof. It's completely family company. No any legacy carrier behind, you know, no any investment funds, no government, nothing. It's just family which falls in love in aviation, in tourism, in traveling, and wants to bring these to, to the Ukrainians. So tour operator join up is really flagman in and was born much, much earlier than SkyUp. SkyUp Airlines initially was born to serve the request like charter companies, the request of join up. And then till 2021, within only three year, uh, we established SkyStream, which is a company for maintenance and our own passenger handling. So, you know, it's quite reasonable when you try to make circle and when you try to create uh, additional entity because uh, which need to serve your volume. Why it was important? It was important because you see the numbers. So we, we started with two aircraft in 2018. Then in the end of year, it was already five. And then in 2021, we have 15 aircraft and carried two five point million uh, of passengers. And uh, we had 1,200 people on board that, and we were profitable. So for airlines, for startup airlines, with quite tough compet uh, com competition on the market, uh, it, it was good result. We were proud of it. And definitely we have huge plans and um, yeah, it was our network only from Kyiv, but we also operate from Odessa, Lviv, from Zaporizhia, from Dnieper, from Kharkiv, so from all main cities in Ukraine and um, from Helsinki to Zanzibar, it was our network and we were dreaming about the further development. And I want to underline that SkyUp was never usual and, and you know, ordinary company and you will see now the evidence. So um, being born by family, this family didn't know that there are some strict rules or procedures and you should follow like legacy uh, career. You know, in aviation, there are a lot of procedures and uh, rules which we just accept like something that cannot be changed. But it's not true. And that's a very bright example. One day we replaced the heels and the pencil skirts with white sneakers with white t-shirts and with orange suits, loose orange suits. It was done because we treat our um, our crew like our customer. We wanted them to be happy. We wanted them to have to experience uh, some comfort and uh, joy. And in the end of the day, in the morning, we were so popular, work, cosmopolitan, Claire, 
Marie Claire in different countries, CNN, BBC, you know, it something happened. Honestly, we didn't, uh, we, we hadn't ever considered for such kind of success. We just, our shareholders, they just didn't know that uh, there are some rules and you should follow these rules. And that was in DNA of Skyapa Airlines to make something very unusual. Uh, definitely, that were our plans, which unfortunately had uh, never happened. We wanted to open our own training center, our academy, and I'm pretty sure we would come back to this. But unfortunately, uh, the situation changed. And here's the first lesson which uh, we paid attention, uh, I, I want to bring to the table. So what we did before the war, honestly, we didn't believe it happened. But we tried to consider all weak indicators all slight changes. We cooperated with civil aviation authorities, with embassies, with uh, intelligence services, and what's more important, certainly with lessers and insurance company, but what's more important, with business aviation company. Because business aviation has ha, have the, the best risk assessment. Uh, and considering this, we made a plan when the aircraft didn't spend overnight time in Ukraine, so only turnaround time was implemented. It, it was difficult because nobody around us believed that it should be done, but we did it. And this kept our assets. So when the war started, 14 among 15 aircraft were beyond Ukraine. And that what provided us the possibility to continue operation. And that we what we kindly ask everyone to do in company to estimate your assets, which you need to protect in case if some unforeseen events happened. The same in life. Unfortunately, it's life it happens. I don't know, divorce may happen, yeah? Something may happen. You should estimate and you should understand how you may protect this. Because what you need, you need assets, you need people and aircraft in our case to continue operation. Unfortunately, there are some airlines in Ukraine which did not have such kind of chance only because the aircraft uh, left here in, in, in Ukraine. Uh, having said this, I should admit that intuition played a huge role. You may see my daughter. I took her with me. It was one day before the war. It was a Connect conference in Finland, in Tampere. And I just took her with me occasionally. It was COVID time, you know, school was at online and she took her lessons during this conference via Zoom. And yeah, that was one day immediately before the war. And uh, on the picture, um, uh, 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 on the picture, you also see the schedule. It's a schedule of trains because when the war happened, uh, it's six o'clock in the morning. We were already on the railway station. Honestly, we were in Tampere. I didn't know what to do. I just understood that Tampere is far away from Kiev, and I need to short this distance. And I started moving. That's exactly what you should do to buy time. And just we bought tickets from Tampere to Helsinki in order to 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 buy some time and to understand what can we do uh, further. Definitely, we wanted the next day would never come, but it happens. And 24th of uh, February, uh, when the lives of all Ukrainian people spread it into two parts, it was before and it was after and people took just immediate some you know luggage which they have and um, some dogs for instance it's very important it seems like all ukrainians took dogs and cats uh, and treated them like um, uh, like kids and um, and started moving and started try to evacuate their families amidst enduring endless missile attacks what's important at that time uh, and definitely, I wanted to tell you, you know, that we activated our emergency plan immediately and we started to implement crisis strategy, but it was not true, definitely. We were shocked. We were, we, we cried. We could not believe it happened. And in this moment, um, you should accept the reality and you, you should forget about such thoughts like, why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to my family? You will reflect it later. But in this time, you should admit it happened. That's it. That's reality. And you should make choice to be alive, to keep company, to continue operation. It's much more important that it um, can be explained 
But if you uh, recall any unpleasant memories in your life when something unpleasant happened, took place, you would understand exactly what I mean. So your internal choice to keep operation and to keep running. Honestly, it doesn't mean that in the next moment you can get rid of your memories. It's not possible. But we played such games. We provide the space for grief. And honestly, we even did, we even had meetings with our team, just meetings for share our experience to talk about how our families, our kids, just you know, providing time for uh, for sorrow, for being sad, being upset feeling helpless, powerless. And then we play such game like we spread it, the space into two rooms. Why it's important? Because people think that pain or grief can shrink or reduce. Unfortunately, it's never happened. It's not possible. It will still, it will stay the same. What should be done? You should grow over and grow around your grief. And when you gather your team, you create this space and in this huge space, not individual, but collective, this trauma becomes less in comparison with the space which you create. And you need brief. You need to take care about yourself. First of all, simplify, eliminate all the process which could be stopped. They should be stopped immediately and make priorities. That's exactly what you should do during any crisis, personal or professional. And what does it mean, the concept of two rooms? It means that here, this is, these are the meetings for, uh, for, for being upset. Yeah, the meeting where we can share our feelings. But at the same time, the second room in our two rooms bedroom, the second room is dedicated to keep running cooperation, is dedicated to our business opportunities. And definitely being a resilient leader, maybe if you ask me to leave only one lesson from all of lessons, I will leave this one because you should demonstrate empathy and optimism. Honestly, guys, in crisis, nobody knew what would happen. Nobody knew. But it's still not an obstacle for you to believe in better uh, future, okay? And to share this positive and this optimism with your team. You should demonstrate problem solving skills with very single matter. I don't know if somebody cannot find something or need some contact or any support, just do it. But the most important issue is continuous cooperation. Let me show how it was with us. So first of all, that's my team. Uh, it was very first meeting with them, honestly. I was terribly scared. I didn't know what to, 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 to talk. I didn't know how to explain, you know, what happened. But I felt that I should meet with them. And that's what I kindly ask you to do. Speak to your people, even despite that you don't know what to, 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 to tell them. Create meeting, start talking, and then you will create this space together. And when we experienced this terrible situation in Sudan, when two of our aircraft were totally destroyed, we also have people here. And you can see on the screen that these people experience huge difficulties, sometimes no food, no water, um, no medicines. And we didn't know what would be the outcome of the evacuation. We didn't know how to evacuate because nobody in the time in the world, starting from the UK and uh, finalizing uh, with the USA uh, services, they didn't know what to do. And uh, what we started doing, uh, we started communicate with them uh, via messages because no connection was it, uh, as well. Via messages and leaders of group. And maintaining these lines of communication in an open and transparent way is crucial practice to go through crisis. People start trust you. People feel that you are near them. And they had idea, honestly, that you know what to do and fake it until you make it, even if you didn't know at that time. Um, this is exactly the pictures from uh, Sudan, from Khartoum airport, where it happened. You see, they are very young, uh, and the left picture is immediately when they started. Uh, we started evacuation because they were near the aircraft to start the flight, which was cancelled. But I want to pay your attention on the second picture. The second picture, it was Easter time, you know, 
And this Easter time, you see that their glasses are damaged, the glass are damaged because it was heavy weapon around them. And when it became more or less uh, secure, what they started to do, they took X and started playing these games. You know, we have this game when you should have battle with X. And for us, it was very good sign of they uh, recovering in emotional way, at least for short term. And you should support them this, this with very simple words. You should take care about how do they feel, how they sleep, uh, is anybody ill or not. Don't forget about their birthdays because despite crisis, they have birthdays and they want this human treatment and they will reward you in a very, very, very um, emotional way as well, like they did it uh, with us. And they said to us, you know, uh, luckily they had bread and they used this bread like cakes and said, hi, guys, we celebrate the Easter. Oh, this is a photo. Oh, this is a video. You can see two young girls. Yeah, despite the situation behind them was really difficult. And what happened next to Skyup after we evacuated our aircraft and after we uh, could start thinking about uh, what to do? Honestly, it took only two weeks uh, because luckily I was outside of Ukraine and uh, it uh, provided us the opportunity to start operation almost immediately. On March 6, we operated our very first flight from Chisinau to Tel Aviv. And uh, then we operated each and every day. We made a flight, evacuation flight to Israel, to Portugal, um, uh, to, to, to Turkey. Uh, so we carried refugees from mm. Ukraine uh, and operating. we operated from the uh, nearest city, from Romania, from Poland and from Moldova. Chisinau was our very first airport. We're really grateful to Moldovan civil aviation authorities because airspace in Moldova was closed as well just for your understanding. I didn't know even now how I was managed to persuade them to open airport, to provide us with five freedom to operate from Moldova, these evacuation flights. And on the way back, we took humanitarian goods because you understand there were no medicines, black blankets, nothing uh, in uh, these cities near the boundaries because it was huge flood of uh, refugees. And moving by these small steps, we achieve huge results. Let me show you this is our very first flights. You see that people had their winter clothes because that's what they were in February in Ukraine. It's quite cold, so they took what they can take. And um, we achieved great results. And uh, let me show. Yeah, I just uh, want to comment here. There are our groups in Sudan. You know, there are, uh, in the end of days, there were six groups which we couldn't even uh, uh, have to gathering together because it was dangerous to uh, went out the street. They should be in shelters and uh, sometimes uh, 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 it's hotels, sometimes it's some very strange aviation bases. And honestly, here again, definitely we wanted to provide them the plan of evacuation, but the plan didn't exist. Doesn't mean that we should not talk to them or we should be uh, frustrated. No, what we did, we tried to allocate these people in one place. And now you see six groups. When we were managed to gather them in three groups, it was huge, huge, huge achievement. And that what does it mean to move small steps to see achievement results and reach these achievement results. And then you will see the next step. And also the strategy which we constantly use, as you see, is diversify. We're trying to diversify our contacts from embassy to civil aviation. I was ready to speak to, to, to all the world just to find the opportunity. And the same we implemented in strategy. So diversification and uh, uh, adaptive strategy became our new religion. We have never operated, for instance, government flights. We started doing this because we need to do something. We have never operated ACMI flights. You see there are our partners within first and half 
first, first within two years. Uh, some of them joined uh, a little bit later. So these are our ICMI partners um, who took our aircraft and operate. And uh, it was our it hadn't ever been our business before the war. We concentrated on the process. We forget about results and results came. Moreover, we knocked in so many doors in how we could within all the companies. So even our HR depart department, human resource, I mean department, even uh, uh, they started doing some commercial and business activities. And you see, this is a figure. So before the war, no SMI operation at all, only charter flights, scheduled flights, and some part of cargo. The distribution was around 45, um, 50, uh, uh, 53 percent of schedule schedule and charter and the uh, small percentage of cargo flights because it was COVID and we converted our aircraft du during COVID time into cargo uh, modification. After the war, ACMI provides 75 percent of our revenue and I promise you that we will reverse it again. So now we have the opportunity, we have the opportunity to add new uh, sources of revenue I will share with you just uh, two minutes uh, later. And this diversification provided us with opportunity to carry one point um, over eight million passengers per 2022. Definitely not passenger of Skyup, it's passengers mainly of um, our ICMI partners, but 25% of our operation is charter flights, which we are proud to operate from Poland, from Romania, uh, uh, from Baltic countries, obtaining seven and fifth freedom for traffic rights that we also consider like huge achievement. That's what's going on now. We open our, uh, uh, we establish new company in Malta and we very proud of this in May, the certificate uh, uh, AOC and Kama and the operational air, airline operational license were obtained. Uh, our join up company developed and uh, already exist in uh, one, two, three, four, seven new uh, countries. And that's only beginning, I can promise to you. That's our Sky Malta team. We are proud to obtain our certificate. Why it's important? Because now we can operate in Europe without any restrictions in terms of traffic rights. And um, we celebrated our five years. Yeah, it happens in May of this year. And um, yeah, we definitely will continue. Um, you see our team and you can compare uh, one and a half year ago and in this year. So even during what time we will manage, it's particular my team, we will manage to to smile. And, you know, uh, that's huge achievement for us when they are smiling, even despite the war is still continuing. And that's very simple. We just try to work hard. And we had hoped, we have chance that it would not kill us. And it didn't kill us. We know that it's not the end, honestly. The situation with Israel again and again uh, reminded us that unfortunately shit happens and crisis happened. And we try to find opportunities in any adversity. And all our hearts today with Israel, which is very important country for us, and we had operation uh, to Egypt. It was our main destination country in winter season and current winter season. Definitely it had a negative impact, but it's OK. We already know what to do with this. And as far as we know what to do, our people know what to do and how to be very brave Ukrainian. There are our staff. We are proud of them to, you know, to 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 become grown up, unfortunately, um, in, and, and become very, very adult. Despite we still keep our childiness as well, and we still, you know, uh, have some love. Uh, that's a picture which my daughter made when she knew that I was preparing to this meeting. And um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure that all of you know the Russian letters, but um, their uh, signature on the T-shirts of our staff. Um, uh, provide the direction for the Russian military ship exactly where it should follow. So, yeah, we still continue to have love and we still continue um, to to live because we know that our porcelain skin became steel. And we know that if once we became from caterpillar to 
we passed this way from caterpillar to butterfly, we could repeat it again, even despite that maybe tomorrow something new would happen. We will continue to live, we will continue to keep operation, we will celebrate life. And that's very last lesson which I want uh, to share with you. I don't know if video will play. Let me check it. Maybe it will. Have you put the sound on? Because maybe the sound yeah, is you low. don't see, you don't hear it. No, maybe on the right there is the sound button, and maybe it's no, low. Teams doesn't allow to transfer sounds, unfortunately. Ah, okay. It's OK, no, no worries. Yeah. Just uh, you know who, who this man is. <laughs> yeah, and this man exactly um, in his evening regular evening address two weeks ago, around two weeks ago after we um, evacuated Ukrainians uh, from Gaza. So he mentioned Skyup and we were very proud and we accepted this like huge reward. And our coming back and summarizing our uh, meeting today. Uh, I just want to underline very last lesson which we took with us, which we will take with us. It's a lesson to appreciate. And you know, to appreciate this life, um, not only for its joys, but for its challenges as well, because they are part and crisis, you know, they are part of the game and it's not over. And um, such tough events, they are part of um, journey of life and it's far away from complete. And I want to thank you for being witness of our story. And um, on the Christmas time, I want to pay your attention that, you know, these lessons which we appreciate as well, uh, because we appreciate being survived, being alive, being operative, operation, uh, operating and yeah, these invaluable lessons, uh, they are far away uh, from purely aviation industry. So you can take them and uh, you can imply them in any life situation. And finalizing, you know, I, um, I estimate uh, last two years as years where we survived and maybe 2024, I wish to all of us to be different and maybe it will be the year of revival. That's all, Daniel, your, your turn. Ludmilla, you have blown me away. Usually I'm always speaking about the four criteria to be part of Ladies Beyond Flying. Yeah, you have to be smart, you have to be enthusiastic, you have to be upbeat and you have to be positive. But from now on, I can just say you have to be Ludmilla because it's a summary of all these words. You are so energetic. And I think uh, what, what, what I liked most from your talk was um, keeping moving, because I think this is exactly what is all about. Um, and yeah, I'm blown away. And I think I see a lot of speechless people here in the audience. Are there questions from the audience? So Ludmilla, then I have a question. Is it because I saw in your in your picture from your uh, birth location that there were a lot of bears, isn't it? Also, so you had to cope with bears. Is it is this maybe the reason that you have this energy and this willingness because you have to also move around if there is a bear in this Arctic cycle? And is this is this the secret of of yourself where you get the energy? Um. Yeah, honestly speaking, I think it's something that you have no chance to choose. I wanted uh, my parents uh, answering me this question as well, because after uh, Donetsk and after Syria and uh, after Gaza, and I had a ticket on 12th of October to Tel Aviv, you know, the, uh, so yeah. And um, and then I had a ticket on 25th of November to Dublin, if you knew what happened in Dublin. So some of my colleagues asked me to buy a ticket to, the, to, to Moscow and uh, I promised them <laughs> I would do it one day. Honestly, I think um, uh, you, you, uh, you don't know, but uh, I have been playing chess for 10 years uh, when I was uh, just a young girl and it helps you because during crisis 
you should you should be independent okay you should consider what's going on you should be independent and you should consider different scenarios and like build inside of you decision tree and ask you constantly what happens if what happens if the situation will be like this one and just prepare you to be ready to activate plan B. So you constantly should take in mind plan B. And that's very good practice. And uh, yeah, if you have kids, I highly recommend it if you want them to, you know, to manage the crisis. But um, it has your own drawback. Now, now, which when the crisis finished, you feel boring. <laughs> how many how many moves you can think ahead in chess? Um, it's I, I have never calculated, but you know, sometimes you play your game just blind without seeing the board. So you, you can play uh, not not seeing uh, in total uncertainty, in total darkness. So, yeah, uh, it is. There was a question I, from Lena. Lena, yeah. you have still your question. Yes, yeah, thank you. I'm already on the move as it was advised, so I hope everybody can hear me. Yes. Um, my question was future plans. So we see the history, how it was going on, the quite successful management of the crisis. But then, what is the plans for the future, if there are? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's a huge question, and I see Marco, and I'm smiling when I see Marco because Marco is part of our future success. I'm pretty confident. So we, um, yeah. Uh, first of all, I think IBS uh, is a, a game changing company. Honestly, 30 years ago, we could not assume. So we uh, co cooperated with Sabre, with Amadeo, with Travelport, and we could not assume that uh, the situation would be changed. And uh, we start, we signed our PSS contract um, a couple of months uh, ago uh, in order to make our home work uh, in, a proper, in a proper way. So we wanted to start our scheduled flights next uh, year uh, in summer. Uh, we will do it step by step, so the volume of the schedule flights in the beginning w w would be not huge. It will be moderate, but in order, you know, when you implemented UPSS system, there are some issues, definitely not with IBS, but sometimes they happen, so you need time uh, to build your distribution system. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's the idea. So when we will develop our scheduled flights, we need to overcome only one obstacle. You know, today in aviation market, it's huge shortage of aircraft. So we need our fleet to expand. That's our task and our first priority. And then, yes, yeah, the development of the scheduled flights and charter flights in Europe, that are our immediate task now. Thank and you. Okay. one uh, one small secret maybe you know so now the project of uh, opening ukrainian airspace is a project which we participate as well it's very complicated project um there are a lot of guys uh, so for instance osprey uh, uh, flight solution if i'm not mistaken in their name so they participated as well and um, it's constantly estimation from governmental side airport side community side and as usual so i i asked the cow to participate so uh, there are a lot of guys and they try to solve the decision it's not Mm, it's not easy, unfortunately. It's risk of uh, friendly fire and different issues. So in the means, in the meantime, military uh, services are deal with this, as only they provided the approval. Uh, we're talking about uh, Borispol Airport and Vif Airport. So then we, as civilian uh, civilians, we can step in and start thinking about this. But still, we have hope, and honestly, we have huge hopes for next year. And if it happens, definitely Skyup will be the first airlines to to come back to Ukraine. Don't believe Ryanair. They have. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Any further questions from the audience? I'm uh, all I can say is I'm I'm blown away as well. I mean, it's 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 a little chasing ambulance or it, it sounds a little a little. Um, I don't know how to put it. It doesn't feel right to say that this was a very impressive and fascinating presentation because there's a lot of sadness in this, but uh, it's it still is very 
moving. It's very moving um, to hear and, and, and see. And, and I just wonder whether, as sad as this may sound, a crisis is what people, what, what gets the best out of people at times. Um, because you, you, I mean, when you're sitting, when you were talking about minus 40 degrees, I actually went and put on my hoodie because I, I started feeling cold. So it, it goes to show how how um, very vivid your explanations were. But I'm, I'm wondering when I'm sitting in my warm office and the only reason of concern is, should I pick up my daughter now or should I pick it up in half an hour? Do I take the dog for a walk? We tend to get complacent. So I, I sometimes wonder whether, as sad as this is, a crisis really produces diamonds because you create this pressure and the outcome is that some people break under pressure and some people just shine. I, I and I'm not even I'm not even asking for it for I'm not even looking for an answer. I'm just sharing my thoughts because it was moving. Well, this and is we've discussed a lot, but I haven't I mean, and you've shared a few stories, but I haven't I mean, in that distilled fashion. I'm a bit speechless, which means a lot. But it's very, very good comment and great and brilliant comment. And not only to people, guys, it's to countries as well, not only to people and to companies, but to countries as well. Nobody believe if you uh, look through presentation uh, in the first page, you will see that the newspapers headlines were that Putin would um, uh, would uh, I don't remember exactly, but that within three days the war would be ended. And that was a statement, you know, and nobody knew that Ukraine has such power and that Ukraine, Ukraine is a diamond, honestly. There's a question from Anastasia. Yeah, so I think that it will be not a question, but rather just to say huge thanks for Ludmila. Actually, I was lucky enough to uh, cross our roads several times. So I would just say that, uh, like personally and also from a professional point of view, uh, definitely world needs more sky ups. I have been following this company for I think since uh, it was born, and it's just endless uh, amounts of uh, situations where I also learn a lot. So I wish there would be more companies like this, would be more so resilient people like you, Ludmila and also people who could share their experience, because this is so important. We are all going through different situations, and this is uh, definitely very echoing because I'm right now sitting in Tel Aviv. Uh, so it's definitely a lot, let's say, about crisis, about uh, how we like tend to react to this. And so like much thanks for you uh, for sharing this information. This is just an inspiration, and I was just agree with many people here that we are speechless about everything that you shared today <laughs> thank you so much for this thank, thank you. you and my compassion to to you in uh, israel yeah. alex you have a question yeah well it's not really a question i just wanted to say thanks uh, you know, we've been in touch on linkedin and uh, you know uh, it's it's really nice to meet you finally um, and I just wanted to say, like, you know, I was born in Kazakhstan and this whole war is very uh, especially painful because I do have some relatives, extended family members living in Ukraine. So it's really like it's really hard and I, I could feel you. Uh, but what I find so inspiring is that uh, in time of crisis, you manage still to learn something and to share it with others like thinking of, uh, you know, personal difficulties or some other difficulties in life, you just focus on surviving. You are not thinking on about the lessons that you are learning. And of course, you are not sharing it with the others. And that's why, like, I just admire, I admire you uh, as a presenter, really something to learn from. And I admire SkyUp and I really, really, really hope that uh, in 2024, you finally get back to commercial operations and the situation will allow. So, yeah, yeah. Just with you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, we, we should have uh, Daniel next year, maybe before Christmas time, we should have dress code like this because Alex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
So thank you again, uh, Mila. This was fantastic. And uh, um, I'm also very grateful that our upcoming speaker is already here in your call. Sina was carefully listening. Uh, and uh, Sina and I, we, we had um, opportunities to speak a lot during the Women in Aviation and Logistics Mentorship Program. And um, so I asked her to talk uh, in January Uh, 16th January 24 about her um, change management experience and how she made uh, a change in an ever-changing world. I'm looking very much forward to it and um, yeah and I wish really everybody from now on I could say Ludmilla but I always say stay smart, upbeat, enthusiastic and positive and hope to see you all uh, in 2024. I think it was an amazing uh, presentation I would say the most energetic. So now you raised the bar very high without putting any pressure on you, Sina. But uh, I think uh, uh, you showed every crisis is an opportunity. And um, so I think, yes. as I said, we need more sky ups and we need more Lord Millers in the world of aviation and uh, in the world in general. So please stay healthy and safe. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and looking forward to have you with us in 2024. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.